Hello and welcome to Newburn Parish for our reading and sermon on hope. And I hope that you get something from it. The lesson is from Romans 8, verses 24 to 30. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn upon many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. This is the word of the Lord. The passage that we heard read today from Harry is all about hope. And I can't ever remember a time in my life when the message of hope was more needed. Paul tells us of a hope that sustains us through challenges, through difficulties and through trials. And he knew about that because he certainly had a huge number of those in his lifetime. But so many people don't know any hope, particularly given the situation with COVID and what seems like ever-changing guidelines and now for us here in the North East, a change to the law. People are feeling trapped in situations where they have little control. So my question is, are you feeling trapped in the midst of this pandemic? Do you have a hope that all will be well again? Particularly when we thought that we got through it and now here we are back in lockdown again and the virus itself creeping ever closer to, to our door. We can't see our loved ones, we can't see our friends, we can't do normal things and it feels like life is on hold for so many. But without hope we can become sick, we can become sick in our body, in our mind and in our spirits which can then lead to discouragement, to depression and a feeling of hopelessness. Hope is a wonderful thing, especially when you can trust that what you're hoping for is actually going to happen. As Christians, we have a hope in Christ that one day he will return. He'll return to make everything new and he'll wipe away every tear from our eyes. But sometimes we put our hope in things that are very unlikely to happen. Some people put their hope in winning the lottery and they'll say to me, Oh, when I win the lottery, dot, dot, dot. But there aren't many lottery winners, are there? Well, I don't know of any. So where should we turn for our real hope? Is there a true and genuine hope for our future, especially at this time? Well, God tell, God's word tells us, yes, there is. And the passage from Romans that we heard read talks about the extraordinary hope that Paul, in the midst of huge difficulties, had. He had that extraordinary hope. But how do we find hope? Where do we look for it? How do we fill our hearts and our minds with the hope of Christ? We might know in our heads that Christ is the source of our hope, but how do we get it into our hearts? How do we believe it, especially at times like this? Hope is an active word. It's a doing word. It isn't passive. Hope doesn't just come knocking at our door. Hope needs to be welcomed. It needs to be practised. You might be sitting there thinking, what does she mean by practising hope? That sounds really odd. Maybe you've never considered before that we can be proactive and intentional about filling our lives with hope and then from having that hope with joy. I spoke a few weeks ago in church about uh, forgiveness and that forgiveness often has to be an act of the will and it can be the same with hope. It's sometimes that we need to practice, sorry, it's something that we need to practice 
Otherwise, hopelessness can creep in. Like so many of us over the last few months, there have been times when hopelessness has crept in and it's begun to overwhelm me. I've despaired. Yes, I've despaired. When am I going to see my grandchildren again who live in Scotland, who I can't walk past the window and wave and say hello to them that I've seen once this year? When can I see my friends again? When can I have fun again and have a laugh and, and go out and do all of the things that I enjoy doing? I don't know. And there are times when I can begin to feel despairing and I can lose hope that we'll ever all be together again. I don't like it um, that we can't sing together in church. Singing feeds my spirit. I do sing at home, but it's not the same as congregational singing and singing with people in church. So if, like me, you have times when you're drifting towards hopelessness, there's one thing that I urge you to do, and then there are a few things that I think can be helpful for all of us. The thing that I urge you to do is to not be alone. So many of us do just lock ourselves away, and it's so much easier to cut ourselves off now in lockdown. If we feel we have no hope, we have to tell someone. Don't suffer alone. Tell someone how you're feeling. And there are times when I've heard people accuse their church or their vicar of not caring. But if we don't know, we can't help you. Tell others and let them care for you and help you. So let others in. We were made for relationships. We need others around us, especially other Christians. Allow others to encourage you and let's be a community of encouragers. At the moment, we need each other and God more than ever. So that's what I urge you not to do. And here are some of the things that you can do to actively seek hope. Firstly, do something that feeds your spirit. What I mean by that is, what is the thing that brings you closer to God? Maybe it's a walk in nature, a walk by the sea, I don't know. But don't be alone, go out. I know Malcolm, um, who's a member of our church, was having to fully shield through the whole of lockdown. And he was desperate and he longed to go out for a walk. Because walking feeds his spirit like singing feeds mine. Think about what it is that feeds your spirit, then try and do it. During the lockdown, I've told many of you that I started taking photographs of the garden birds. They're so beautiful. And it meant that I had to sit still, I had to concentrate so I could get a good picture. It took my mind off not seeing my family as I was concentrating on, you know, sometimes not breathing so that the birds wouldn't fly away. I loved it and I loved the photos that I took and I've got them. Um, but it, and it really did make a difference and it made me feel better. Now, I'm not saying that it lasted forever. I'm not saying that, that, you know, I just felt great after that all the time. But it really did make a difference. Nature can be therapeutic. Go for a walk and thank God for his beautiful creation. We're blessed to live in this area, so close to the river, so close to lots of trees where you'll hear the birds. Dan, who's a member of our congregation from St Michael's, lives in a flat. He loves going out for walks, but he also enjoys watching the foxes and the badgers from his window. And I know that brings him lots of pleasure. Secondly, the thing that we can do is that we should pray often. And the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Impossible, you might think. Life's too busy. We've got so many calls on our time in the world that we live in today. Who could possibly expect us to keep their minds on Christ at all times? Surely God wouldn't expect that of us. He knows that we're busy, except that it doesn't say anywhere in the Bible, pray without ceasing unless you're busy. It really is possible to pray without ceasing, and it's possible without making huge changes to your daily life. It's all about shifting your thoughts and turning everyday moments into prayers. It's a bit like having the radio on in the background. Keep it tuned in, keep talking to God as you go throughout the day. Another thing is something that my spiritual director told me to do, and that is that throughout the day you can say over and over a phrase like, Come Lord Jesus, or a line from your favourite hymn or worship song. Or thank God for loving you. It can be anything. Just say it over again as a prayer. When I feel self-critical or a bit down, I'll say, I'm your child. I am forgiven. 
I am a new creation. I am loved by you. Jamie tells me that sometimes one phrase from the UK blessing, which I commend to you, just type UK blessing onto YouTube. And the thing that he says over and over again is, he is for you, he is for you, he is for you. That's in the chorus. And that really helps to change his thinking and it helps him to refocus back onto God again. If you despair, remember, God loves you. We need to remember who we are in Christ and how much he loves us. He delights in you. You are his child. You are chosen. You are loved. You are forgiven. You have the hope of eternity. Even in the despairing, all those things are true. And finally, we should count our blessings. Actually name them. We should write them down to help us to remember the things that we have to be thankful for, rather than the things uh, that we long to have. I'm thankful that I can uh, go on WhatsApp and I can see my grandchildren and I can chat to them. And I'm thankful for that. And in the times when I think, when am I going to see them again? I'm thankful that for today, we have the technology that allows us to do that. But these things that we have, uh, can give thanks for link back to praise and to rejoicing. Do you know that when we worship and praise God, it silences Satan? So thank God for something he's done for you. Turn the praise music up. Have a dance. Sadly, we can't do it together, but oh my goodness, what a party we're going to have when we can. Count your blessings. Remember the good things. Write them down in the times of despairing. Go back and look at them and remember the things that you've got to thank God for. So I asked at the beginning, is there a true and genuine hope for our future, especially at this time? As I said at the beginning, God's word says yes. The Bible gives us so many verses that will give us hope. Words of encouragement from God. Have a look at some of the Bible verses here on the screen. Maybe write them down. And if you feel hopelessness coming along, um, just look over them, read them, and take them as personal words from God just for you. You are his child. You are chosen. You are loved. He adores you. And he wants to be in relationship with you. Please don't despair alone. Ask for help and remember all of the good things that God has for you in the future and today. Amen.